You know, in the fall, I was just talking about, you know, how the bait fish suspend and the fish you know, go with them. And they suspend in open water. And a lot of times you do ride down a lake or in the middle of a creek and they'll just come up schooling. I mean, obviously you're gonna stop and throw at them, but you can't actually target those fish. They set out off the end of, you know, long points, shoals, underwater structure. And they'll actually set out off the break and they use that piece of structure to, you know, to corral the bait. So that's, that's the ones that you can actually target and depend on. We do it a lot back home because we have blueback herring and they're notorious for doing that. You know, top water, flukes, that type of stuff. And, and you really want to fish pretty fast, you know, when they're, when they're up on top doing the deal. But a lot of times when they come up schooling, even if you can't get bit, the ones that are busting, a lot of times the bigger fish will stay down below. The hardest thing in the world, though, is to catch fish schooling on small bait. This is about the best one, you know, the Casey's Classic Runner, because it's small profile, but you can still cast it. Any other thing, you know, you got to throw small walking baits or small swim baits, you can't cast them very far. And you just see, every time I throw this way, they'll come up schooling behind me. So you need something you can cast a long way and hit those singles. I'd rather throw it a, a single that busted on top than I would a big group of them. Just like right here, I'm in 89 foot of water. But there's where the point runs out. It's like 22 on top. So those fish sit out here, they'll run the bait, corral them up on top of that point, and they'll come back and suspend. Finally. Pretty good fish on the old classic runner. Bring back memories right there. A little schooling fish. Let's see if we can catch another one. You get one big enough to eat it and get it on his head, you'll catch him. If you ever get on this pattern and there's, you know, people sink brush or standing timber on these points that'll give fish places to set up so a lot of times if you're running this pattern you can pull up and you'll see where they come up and just sit there for a minute don't even cast to them especially in practice sit there for a minute let them go down kind of fish around and if they come up in that same spot again nine times out of ten there's something there a piece of timber brush pile and then just mark it you ain't even got to make a cast next time you come back during the tournament you can, you can throw right there and that's where you're going to get bit. There's no need to sit and fan cast unless you see one come up schooling. You know, everybody thinks, you know, flip to a piece of wood or whatever. They're not using it in that way. They're not tucked up under the, the limbs and stuff. They're using that. A lot of times it's, it's over deep water, so they're using that shade to shade them from the bait. And the shade, the shad do the same thing. They stay in that shade. So wherever the sun is, it's casting the shade line, that's where they like to sit. Later in the day, they may move, but they're still going to be around that piece of structure. Any time in the fall, you know, bait fish to spin, fish get up under them, they may be schooling over 150 foot of water or 10, you just never know. The ones you can catch are actually schooling on some type of structure. Like right here, you got deep water on a point, they rush the bait up there and eat them. Yeah, when you know you're around a lot of fish, you, you try different things. That top water deal, you know, that's, that's a total reaction deal. And most of the time, you'll catch the biggest one there with the top water. You know, fast as you can over the top, he'll react to it and come up. You know, once you do that a while, maybe catch one or two, they don't really respond to it anymore. I mean, I can see them on my graph on this spot particularly. They're suspended 10 to 12 foot of water. With schooling fish and suspended fish in general, you never want to get to that depth. You want to keep your bait over the top of them, whether it be summer, fall, winter, spring, whatever. Because those fish, they, they want to feed up. So that's all I'm doing, it's just a little slower presentation. I'm keeping my rod high and trying to keep my bait, you know, in that eight to 10 foot range where it's going right over the head. Cause all you're trying to do is just get one to bite to make the school get lit up. And you get one, they might come up schooling again. I mean, you just have to keep swapping up. Basically when I'm doing this, I'll switch between the top water, a fluke, this bait. And if it's shallow enough, every now and then you can pick one up on a jig or a shaky head or something once they've gone down. There's a lot of factors that go into fishing less this way. I mean, you really need current, whether you can see it or not, you know, the, the dam needs to be generating or you need some hard wind. 
perfect scenario is 15 mile an hour wind and bright sunshine. When the sun shines, they can really see you bait good. You can call them up from deeper. See if they would be any with him. Yeah, see that down there with him? A little deeper. Still see him. That's why you can't catch them. They're all the size right here. Fat as mud. There, it must be that one tree that they like. Every time I throw over it, I get bit. 